Hey YouTubers, Roland Martin here. You know, I've, I've been posting now for about two years on this YouTube channel, and just recently I did a, I did a, a really great posting. I got a lot of, lot of uh, views on it. It was on the top 10 bass lures that I recommend. Kind of, kind of a power fisherman, and I like to fish kind of heavy tackle and heavy cover. Whether it's in Connecticut or California, I always find that heavy stuff to fish. And so I did real successful on that. So everybody started uh, asking comments on, on the phone and on the YouTube as to uh, what kind of tackle am I throwing these top 10 baits on? What kind of rod and reel? What kind of line? You know, give, give us some more information. So this is a backup deal on talking about the top 10 lures that I recommend, but talking about the tackle to throw it with. Let's take number 10 again. Let's go back to the top. Okay, let's take the, the, the jerk bait. Now, I, I, I ta talked in the, in the original show about how Rapala came to me back in the 70s and said, hey, try this, try the original Rapala. Well, that kind of started me off on jerk bait fishing. And for about 10 years, I fished a lot of Rapalas. Now, to throw this, what I like to throw is somewhere between 12 and 14 pound fluorocarbon. That's a fluorocarbon line. If you notice, it's a, it's a XPS, it's a Bass Pro Shop model line. You want that, me to do close-ups of any of this? Huh? You want me to do close-ups of any of this? No, that's pretty good. That's, that's the XPS Bass Pro Shop model line. And I'm throwing it on an on a 8 to 1 reel. That's a Bass Pro Shop reel. And I also have some of the favorite reels as well. This happens to be a 7 foot medium action favorite rod. This is a prototype that we're working with, but this is a favorite rod. But it's a light action rod, seven foot. And what you want is, these plugs are pretty light, like in the case of this little 100 uh, series uh, uh, plug. I forgot the name of this one, but anyway, it's a plug we use a lot. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. You need, say, 10 to 12 pound line to throw that with, a little pointer, a little pointer 100 series. Very good for smallmouth, for example. A very, very good line. But anyway, I'm using pretty light line. I'm fishing kind of the edges of cover. I'm fishing open water. I'm not, this isn't really power fishing. It's power fishing to the point that you're working it hard and fast and you're making a lot of casts and there's a lot of jerking and a lot of, a lot of carrying on with it. So it is power fishing in that respect, but it's kind of open water power fishing. Okay, first, first choice, number 10. Okay, let's go to a top water plug. Now, you know, we were talking about plugs that I made, that's actually a takeoff of an old Zara Spook. You know, that's one of the walking baits that, that had revolutionized big bass for over the years. And guys like Charlie Campbell and some of the other noted pros have, have done not only good in freshwater, but in saltwater, the big snook and the big tarp and just eat the heck out of a, a walking plug like, like that homemade one that's like a Zara Spook. Okay, one of the rod and reel combinations that I like for topwater fishing is this is a, a seven foot medium heavy action rod and you can throw it on braid. I happen to have it on, uh, uh, in this case, a uh, 30 pound braid. That works pretty good. But also I like to run it on regular 20 pound monofilament, not fluorocarbon. I'll tell you why I don't run a topwater plug on fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is heavy. It sinks. You make a long cast of fluorocarbon and work in the plug slow, the line will sink and as you pull your top water in, you'll have a big belly underneath the water and it'll pull the top water plug down under the water. So do not use fluorocarbon on a top water plug. Use monofilament, or in this case, I'm using a good braid. Okay, I'm using a, a pretty a medium action seven foot rod because I like to throw a, a top water a long ways. It has a big handle. I'm again using an eight to one ratio reel like I used before. This is my favorite reel. It's a Platinum Series by Bass Pro Shop. Long cast, floating line, in the case of, a, of this braid, or monofilament. No fluorocarbon. Okay, let's go to my, my third choice. Actually, it's number, set, it's number eight. It's, it's coming up from the bottom. I'm going 10, 9, 8. So the number eight choice is now a crankbait. Let's talk about these bigger, deeper plugs. That's the plug that I have nothing to do with. I, can't, I think this is a KVD uh, 6, uh, number 6 model. It runs about 15 or 16 feet deep, big hooks and light line. You can't get a big plug down deep without light line. If you try to throw this on 20 pound line, you're just wasting your time. 
you're not going to get it down very deep a 20 pound line. You're going to have to go to like 10 pound line to get it really deep. And some of the guys are going to 8 pound line. But say 10 and even 12, in some cases, you might go 12 pound line on some of the ledges at the uh, uh, middle of Kentucky Lake. If I'm really cranking deep and say these rock pits around here in South Florida, I'll go usually with 10 pound line and I'll use a long rod. This is a big seven, it's a seven foot three uh, light action rod. It's a medium action rod. It has a long handle and I can throw it a long ways. And this is a soft rod because what I'm doing, I'm using monofilament for the most part. Sometimes I'm using some fluorocarbon, but, I, but I, I, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the fish. I'm, I'm stretching the line with a long, long limber rod and just by keeping pressure on them, you get those big fish kind of hooked deep on a long cast and you just have to play them kind of light and easy. It's, it, you say it's power fishing, it's power fishing from the fact that you're really cranking this hard, you're throwing it a long ways and you're cranking it hard as powerful fishing that you're doing, but it's actually light line and light tackle that you're using. But it is a power fishing technique that I've caught a lot of really big fish on. In the middle of the summertime here in South Florida, I go to these rock pits and I catch a number of bass over seven pounds cranking real deep with these deep, deep, deep uh, diving crankbaits. Okay. What's number six or number seven on the line? Okay, the number seven, I, I'm going to call it a chatterbait because it's hot summertime right now. If this were a cold winter, I'd have it ranked a little bit higher. But for the hot summertime, a chatterbait's not as good as it is in the, in the colder weather. What I tell you what Brett Height throws, and I've talked to him on, on several occasions, Brett Height uses a 17-pound fluorocarbon line. That's it right there. No braid. Braid's fine, but you can feel the chatterbait really good on braid. But the problem with braid, I, I lose fish and so does Brett. He does not use braid. He uses 17-pound fluorocarbon. He uses a long, fairly limber rod, in this case a 7-foot medium action rod. And this is a, the big sexy series, 7-foot medium action, 17-pound fluorocarbon. I'm throwing it on the 8-to-1 reel again. And it's just a perfect combination. You don't want too stiff a rod. You kind of want a little bit of a soft rod. Because a lot of times you're milking this, this chatterbait up over the grass and over the lily pads and over the, the hydrilla. And, and you just want to have just kind of a kind of a light presentation, kind of lifting it over things. You don't want to just power it through there. You got to be kind of finesseful with it. But anyway, it's a great big bass lure. And here in Okeechobee in the wintertime, say in January, there's been a lot of monster seven and eight and nine pound bass caught on the chatterbait. That's really, really a top, top lure. Okay, what's number six on the list? Number six on the list, <laughs> what about a spinnerbait? <laughs> Jimmy Houston would say a spinnerbait's the number one bait. Now, Jimmy and I, we fish together a lot, and uh, we've done a lot of film work together, and we've done a lot of fishing with spinnerbaits a lot together in Mexico and in Canada and every other kind of place Jimmy and I have fished together and uh, he's quite a quite a spinnerbait fisherman. He loves to make short accurate casts to the shoreline. I, I, I do that too. But one of the things I add to my spinnerbait repertoire is kind of power fishing a spinnerbait and that's making long casts, you know, way out in the brush and cover, way out in the, in the grass flats of Okeechobee, kind of buzzing it over the hydrilla beds and okay. On both these spinner baits and the buzz bait, I prefer 20 pound monofilament, not fluorocarbon and not braid, just regular 20 pound monofilament. And for this rod, I like a big powerful rod. I like a medium heavy action, at least a seven foot. I'm talking about a seven or even a seven three rod. I can make a long cast with it. It's got a long handle. And again, I'm using an eight to one reel. So with 20 pound monofilament, you get that strike way out there, you load up on it, just a lot of, it's a lot of pressure and strength. And no matter how he jumps way off at a distance, if you, this line stretches up to about 15 or 16 percent. You can see how much it just stretches and just, in just that little bit right there it stretches. So the farther you cast, the more stretch of course there is, and you load this reel up with a good stretch, and that bass can jump way out there and he won't get off because there's so much elasticity to that line, it just, it just doesn't, doesn't jump off. Okay, spinner baits and buzz baits are certainly, certainly part of my repertoire and they're so much fun to fish. Okay, we're getting down to the big bass stuff now. We're getting down to the flipping water. 
Back in 1980-81, I won three big BASS tournaments in a row. And I won it flipping jigs, just like this big half-ounce jig right here. Okay, what you need is a big, heavy a flipping stick. This is this, the Summit Series. No, I'm sorry, this is the Phantom Series. I'm sorry, this is the Phantom, my favorite. This is a big, heavy-duty flipping stick. And I'm going to just tell you what number it is. It's about the biggest thing they have. And it's a 7-8, it's a 7-foot, seven, 8-inch, seven 3-8ths to 1-and-a-half-ounce, 14 to 25 pound line. Actually, it's uh, <laughs> I use 65 pound braid on this rod, and and I have a, a the drag is all tightened down. I mean, it's a, it's a tight drag, and I'm throwing into the heaviest cover and the heaviest brush and the heaviest place I can possibly find, and I'm just pitching it in there or flipping it in there. I'm putting this rod in my rod holder, and here's another addition. This is the cushion. And what this cushion does, it goes on the back of these big heavy duty rods like this. And now you can stick that in your stomach. And now you really have a powerful setup. It doesn't scar you up and it gives you more leverage. And it just really, you can really bear down. And you can really bust those big old five and six and eight pound fish out of that really heavy cover. Here's what you have to realize. A three pound bass, which isn't a trophy by any means. A three pound bass can get in a labyrinth of limbs or a labyrinth of just weeds and wrap in, in such a way that you can't move them. A three pound bass is completely tie you up. I mean, you can't get them out. The only way you can get them out is rip the cover loose. And so a lot of times when it comes to the 65 pound braid, we're pulling the reeds, we're pulling the logs out, we're pulling all this other vegetation and all this heavy cover along with because the fish is so wrapped up, we can't even get to them. This is particularly true if you're bank fishing. If you're bank fishing, might as well use heavy line because if you're throwing on the other side of that canal and the fish has wrapped you up out there, what are your choices? Go swimming for them? No, I don't think so. The choices are to get heavy enough line and rip them loose, rip them out of that heavy cover. It's about the only way you're going to really have a good successful day. Okay, a flipping stick. Now, people have asked me over the years, in fact, I've had more tournament success Flipping a jig or flipping a crawl worm or some kind of flipping combination, I've had more tournament success in my 40 years of tournament fishing than I have any other way. This is power fishing at its max. A big flipping stick, 65 pound braid, and a big jig. Power fishing 101. Okay. Now let's have a little fun with our let's have a little fun with our fishing. One of the things that I really like to do is I love to fish frogs. What I like in a frog rod is, is about a seven foot rod in an extra heavy action. I just, I know Dean likes, he, he skips them a lot. He likes like a medium action. He does a little bit different. He skips the frogs underneath willows and docks. I can't do that. I, don't, I, I, I can't cast quite like Dean, so I, I don't have the kind of rod that Dean has. I use just a big heavy duty flipping stick, but short. To make this work, again, I'm taking that butt section. You saw me use the butt section of the flipping stick. Let me take that butt section again on the frog rod and stick it on there again. That cushion is really a big deal because when I'm throwing that frog, I got 65 pound braid again. All the guys, Rojas, all the, all the top guys, Ish Monroe, all these really top frog fishermen of the country all use 65 pound braid. They don't use 50 pound braid. They don't use 40 pound braid. They don't do that. They, they use the 65 pound braid. They use heavy duty tackle. I like a long rod handle because now I can stick it in my stomach and really put the leverage on them. You know, when I was 30 or 40 years old, I had more upper body strength. I could do a lot of push-ups. I could lift barbells. I could do all this stuff. I'm an old man now. I don't have the strength I had when I was 30 or 40 years old. I gotta have some help. And one of the helps I have for power fishing is this is the having a butt in my stomach and having this big cushion arrangement on the end of the rod tip and I can really really put the power to them. But anyway, frog fishing is a lot of fun. That visual action, there's nothing quite like it. And I'm throwing not in just little bitty a uh, few little weeds. I'm throwing it in the middle of lily pads. I'm throwing it in the middle of just the biggest jungle of brush and cover you've ever seen. I'm throwing it in reed clumps. I'm throwing it all over the place. It's almost like a kamikaze cast. I mean, I'm, I don't know that I'm even going to get it back out of there. But I do because I have really heavy tackle. You get hung up a lot. 
but you get some really big fish back in that really heavy cover. And you can't get to it any other way, and it's a surface lure. It's something that you run on the top, so it's so much visual action when you throw them back in that heavy cover. Those explosions are just terrific, you just have to winch them out of there. Or in a lot of cases, you have to just take your trolling motor and go get the fish. But at any rate, it's a lot of fun, it's a visual action, it just makes frog fishing just the supreme, supreme thing. Very, very, very much fun. Okay. What's the number three lure in my repertoire? It could be a number two, it could be a three, and I know some people kind of argue about it. I think it's a swim bait. And I'm, I'm going to use a big heavy rod, and I'm, I'm going back to flipping sticks again. I'm, I'm going back to flipping sticks for a couple reasons. I don't reel, reel this rod in a strike position. I reel the swim bait in a worm fishing position with the worm rod up in the air at 45 degrees or off to the side at about a 45 degrees to, to, to my lure because when he takes it, he eats it, I consider it a worm at that point. You hear the thing swimming along, the tail's just going crazy and the bass grabs it and by just giving him that second or so, he gets it better in his mouth. He gulps it down and now he's got it firmly in his mouth and now when I run this rod. Again, I have the big cushion handle. I got it in the stomach. I got it pointed at him now. I drop it down and now I bust him really hard. This is a new reel. This is a reel by favorite. It's actually a, been, uh, been a, it's a prototype at this point. I've been tested. It does really well. It has a great drag system. I have 65 pound test line on this, on this uh, reel right now. It has a great big wide handle. It has power that, that uh, is good as any reel I've ever used in my life. So, so far I really like it. But again, it's a power fishing technique. Well, there's not many lures left that we can we really be talking about. Let's talk about a lure now for the number two choice. Let's talk about a lure that's so easy to fish. Anybody can fish it. Anybody can throw it up anywhere they want to throw it. It's just an easy lure to catch a lot of fish. A rattle trap. A simple, easy to fish rattle trap. Here is one of the original rattle traps that I've used for years. It's a half ounce chrome and blue model. It's all scarred up. It's caught so many bass. I can't tell you how many it's caught. And that is the deal. How I fish it is I just like a, a long rod. I mean about a seven foot rod, a medium action rod. I happen to have it on 20 pound model filament right now. 20 pound model filament is a good choice. I run it sometimes on heavy braid. I run it on 50 pound braid in the heavy grass. A lot of times when I'm trying to bust it through hydrilla, for example, and I'm throwing it out in hydrilla, it gets caught in the grass, and it's about two or three feet deep, and the, and the lure's caught right there. If I take that heavy braid and this heavy rod and go whoop like this, it senses no stretch to the braid, it comes flying right out of there, and I get busted right out of the, of the grass, and the lure just comes boom like this, and, and the bass grab it just as it busts loose from the lure. So having braid sometimes is a big choice when it's getting hung up in the, in the shallow grass like a hydrilla. Well, you could also fish this as a deep water bait. I know up on the lakes like Lake Lanier, I used to fish with some of the guys up there. They'd throw it out in 25 and 30 feet of water and let it sink all the way to the bottom. And just watch your line, watch your line, watch your line. If you see the line twitch, there's a fish hitting it on the way down. But when it hits the bottom, they take it and they pump it up. They pump it up like a worm, they pump it up to the top, let it sink to the bottom. Up to the top, as it sinks down, you get the strike. You can see the strike, you would feel it on the next time you'd pull. Okay, what's the number one lure of all times? Uh, there's no more lures left. What, what, what do you see Roland Martin fishing all the time? What's, what's my number one lure that I always brag about? Well, let's face it, folks. We haven't talked yet about the Cinco, the worm, the number one lure in all the world. Okay, the Cinco from Connecticut, California. The five inch 297 green pumpkin is the number one lure of all times. It has caught more bass for more years than anything ever put together. Every, there's nothing that compares to it. They have sold more lures and more worms and more Cinco's worldwide than any other lure ever in the world. And what this setup is, is basically a quarter ounce, well, that's not quarter ounce, that's an eighth ounce. That's an eighth ounce weight. Sometimes I use a sixteenth of an ounce weight. Sometimes I use no weight at all. If there's zero wind, 
I'll throw that Cinco just like that with no weight. Now, that happens to be 14-pound test uh, fluorocarbon. 14-pound test fluorocarbon is a good all-around Cinco. It, you can set the hook really hard. You can really get things going on 14-pound. Now, if that's just you throw into the edge of a boat dock, throw into the edge of a stomp, throw into the edge of, a, of the weed lines and stuff, 14 is fine. If you throw it under, skip it underneath the dock, if you throw it into the bulrushes, if you throw it into the tree, I'd go, to, I'd go heavier. In fact, I do, I do a lot of 50 pound braid. When I'm talking about heavy cover, I'm using 50 pound braid on a lot of Cinco fishing. And when I use the 50 pound braid, I'm also beefing up the hook. I'm going to a 4 aught EWG super hook, super line hook. It's called a super line hook. It's just a bigger, stronger hook for heavier line like this 50 pound braid. Now, a rod that I like a lot, and I go to a six and a half foot rod, and I'll tell you why I go to six and a half foot so much. Six and a half foot to me is a more accurate rod for me to cast. It's still a medium heavy action rod, so I can set the hook pretty hard. It's only six and a half foot, but I can make a more accurate cast with a six and a half foot rod. Now, why I'm making a more accurate cast is because so often, Bass are a predator. And they're hitting out a reflex, and they're sitting on an ambush point. They're sitting by that stump, or that rock, or that pile of grass, or that boat dock, and they're sitting there just in the shade. They have non eyelided eyes. They, they, they got a shady spot to hide in, and they're just like a cat hiding in, in, in an ambush point, in a lair, in a lair. And so as that Cinco comes right in front of them, they'll hit it reflexively as it comes in front of them, that's one way, but then as it hits the bottom, it just lays there like nothing, and they're looking at it, and sometimes you kind of dead stick it a little bit, and give them two or three seconds, and they'll look at that worm, they'll look at the worm, and the first time you twitch it about an inch, they suck it up, boom, and you see your line twitch. Anyway, that's, that's my top ten choices of, uh, of tackle and, and lures and, and line and rods. And I'm just hoping that you'll be a, a better fisherman because of it. It's my, it's my choice for the power fishing that I do. If, if I were talking about finesse and open water, maybe I'd have a different choice. And, I, and maybe in, in, turn, in, in videos to come, I'll cover some of those kind of things. I'll cover that open water aspect. I'll cover that finesse aspect. I'll cover the, the down shot aspect of, of fishing and light line. So I post every Wednesday about 6 o'clock, and I post every Sunday about 6 o'clock. And I just hope that I, I'm, I can help you out because I love I love t t telling you a thing or two, whether you believe me or not. Hey, I've been there and I've seen that. I'm telling you, I'm an old guy, but I've seen it all, and I can help you out. I really think I can. So I appreciate it, and please subscribe. See you later.